Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Zero Coupon Bond versus Regular Bond Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance Most of this information can be found at Investopedia What is the difference between a zero coupon bond and a regular bond which you can find online Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there This by Chad Langager, updated August 31st, 2020 in prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping them in mind. We're now asking, what is the difference between a zero coupon bond and a regular bond? The difference between a regular bond and a zero coupon bond is the payment of interest, otherwise known as a coupon, as coupons. So if we just think about bonds in general, note that if we are the investor, we're thinking from the perspective of the investor then we typically want the balance portfolio so we might be investing some into equities into stocks some into the fixed income into the bonds on the bond side of things we could think of it in essence as a kind of loan us loaning the money to the issuer of the bond that being typically either the government or the a corporation and usually then if you think about this and compare it to say when you take out a loan say like a mortgage usually then you are if you're the one borrowing in the mortgage you're paying back both interest and uh, principal each time you make the payment and they try to even it out over the payments as you pay them back in the case of a bond it's structured a little bit differently normally right we're going to say we're going to give the money to the corporation or the issuer of the bond the could be the government and then we're going to be receiving in return instead of regular payments that include the principal just the interest portion just the rent portion often that normally would happen like in a semi-annual or twice a year instead of a monthly type of basis and then at the termination of the bond we would in essence receive the principal back we can also buy the bond at a discount or a premium for example if you're talking about zero coupon bonds then you have a situation where you're where you're not getting the payments uh, on a periodic basis interest or principal and instead you're going to get the payment at the end which will in essence account for the the basically interest that has been uh, accrued during that period because you will typically buy the bond basically at a premium in other words you're going to buy the bond for an amount less than the face amount or the amount that you're going to receive at maturity in other words the difference then is in essence interest when you receive at maturity so a regular bond pays interest to bondholders while zero coupon bonds does not issue such interest payments so you're not going to get those regular interest payments instead zero coupon bondholders merely receive the face value of the bond when it reaches maturity so again you might say well why would i do that why would i loan money uh in essence pay for something where i'm not going to get the regular interest payments because you're buying the bond at a premium and when you get the face amount it'll typically be more than you paid for it therefore you are in essence getting the interest but you're getting it at the point in time when the maturity happens rather than getting the interest portion of it as regular payments over the term of the bond so regular bonds, which are also called coupon bonds, pay interest over the life of the bond and also repay the principal at maturity. The difference for investors, long-term zero coupon bond investors gain the difference between the price they pay for the bond and the amount they receive at the bond's maturity. So this amount can be substantial because zero coupon bonds are typically purchased at deep discounts to the bond's face value. And you can kind of compare this like if you were to take out a loan for example instead of the normal structure of the loan where you basically pay back the same amount each month which includes an interest and principal component you can imagine one where you just pay back the interest and then you give back the loan at the end or you can imagine a situation where you're going to say i'm going to pay you the lump sum at the end which includes the interest and basically the principal that's kind of what's happening here on the bond side we on the investing side of things in essence loaning money and we're promised to pay back the face amount they're going to give back the face amount but we're going to purchase it at something below the face amount and the difference between the two you know is in essence interest that has accumulated over the time so this discount frequently leads to higher returns in the long run a zero coupon bond will usually have higher returns than a regular bond with the same maturity because of the shape of the yield curve 
So obviously you're kind of taking on more risk in that you're not getting payments. You're not getting the income throughout the time frame. You're getting paid all at one lump sum at the end. So you would expect that you would want a bigger return in order to, to uh, buy those bonds as compared to bonds that were paying you periodically. So with a normal yield curve, long-term bonds have higher yields than shorter term bonds. The interest payment made by regular coupon bonds are due before the date of maturity. So those payments are like small zero coupon bonds that mature earlier. Uh, interest payments cut down the wait time and the risk. So they, so they also reduce expected returns. The difference for speculators, zero coupon bonds are more volatile than coupon, uh, than coupon bonds. So speculators can use them to profit more from anticipated short-term price movements. So if you're in a spec, again, if you're looking at it in terms of a long-term investor, then again, you're probably trying to get in exposure to kind of bonds in general to, to wait to, to balance out your portfolio. When we're talking about speculators, then we're talking more about people that are on possibly on the short term trading type of thing, trying to make money, you know, predicting the market, beating the market in essence, basically on the short term, looking for the short term kind of activity. So remember that you want to know where you stand in terms of what kind of investor you're you're aiming to be here. So all other things being equal, the price of a zero coupon bond will increase more than the price of a regular coupon bond when interest rates fall. Because U.S. Treasury bond prices respond strongly to interest rate changes, zero coupon treasuries are preferred for speculating on interest rates. Zero coupon corporate bond prices are also volatile, so they so they can be used for speculating on the health of the issuing company. Suppose that a company facing bankruptcy previously issued zero coupon bond and coupon bonds that both mature in five years. The market price of both bonds would have plummeted with the result that the coupon bonds now pay, pay very high interest related to their purchase price. Uh, that creates a cushion if the company should go bankrupt before maturity. The zero coupon bond has no such cushion, faces higher risk and makes more money if the issuer survives. So zero coupon bonds and taxes. Zero coupon bonds may also appeal to investors looking to pass on wealth to their heirs. If a, if a bond selling for $2,000 is received as a gift, it only uses $2,000 of the yearly gift to exclude uh, for ex tax exclusion, gift tax exclusion. So note when, when you get into like estate planning and gift kind of planning, those things are kind of tied together. You're looking at the estate taxes, which typically will be applicable to uh, people that have larger incomes. So when someone, a wealthy person dies, you know, we all know that the government rejoices, comes in and rolls the corpse over and starts going through the pockets and seeing if there's any diamonds uh, that have been established in any cavities or anything like that. So, so that's what, so obviously then, and then you know that the person that was doing estate planning might say, well, I'm just gonna gift everything to my inheritance to my children or something like that before I die so they don't take my money after I'm dead but then uh, uh, the, the government didn't like that so of course now you've got the gift the gift uh, tax uh, it's tied into the exclusion for for the estate tax or the death tax so now there's all this estate you know this tax planning for estate planning can get quite complex and using ways to maximize the amount of gifts that you can get to lower the level of the estate so that there's less taxation upon death of a wealthy individual so that gets into a whole nother kind of topic however the recipient ultimately receives substantially more than two thousand dollars after the bond reaches maturity unfortunately the zero coupon bondholder uh, some taxes can reduce the effectiveness of this strategy so in the u.s zero coupon bonds create a tax liability for interest payments even though they don't actually pay periodic interest that creates a phantom income problem for the bondholders so it can be challenging to come up with the money to pay taxes on income that was not received so notice that if you were to look at the interest like the income you have, have kind of an accrual basis kind of concept and a cash basis type of concept and if you have an income tax and you're saying well you earned the income the income has accrued on it if the tax code is saying I want you to to pay the tax on income when it is accrued not necessarily when it's paid because you have earned it 
And normally when we think about a loan, for example, the income is accruing, interest accrues because there wouldn't be a loan if there wasn't, if there wasn't income related to it on a market uh, transaction, an arm's length transaction. But the problem with taxes and income tax is that if you charge income on income that has accrued, but you haven't received the cash, then you, if it's a substantial tax, you might not have the cash to actually pay the income tax because you haven't got the cash even though you recognize the income. So consequently, it is often a good idea to hold zero coupon bonds in a tax deferred retirement account to avoid pay, paying taxes on future income. So you, that would be under like a an IRA or a 401k, possibly the most common kind of deferred tax accounts. A zero coupon bond issued by a US local or state government entity is another alternative. All interest on these uh, municipal bonds, including input interest for zero coupon bonds, is free from U.S. federal taxes. Municipal bonds are often free from state and local taxes as well.